Our first storyteller is Matthew Dix. Come on, Bellhop! When I was a little boy, I liked to draw pictures. There was nothing I liked better than spending an afternoon with my brother and sister at the table drawing. It, it was the best thing. Um, I loved to draw until my brother, I realized, was better than me. He was a younger kid, and I remember the day his Tyrannosaurus Rex looked better than mine, and he didn't have to look at the book to make the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So being the eldest, I declared, that drawing is stupid now, and we're going to play outside much more often. <laughs> and that was the end of drawing for us. <laughs> but until that day, it really was something that we loved. But I grew up without any money in a poor house, and my parents couldn't buy us drawing paper. So we were like the only kids who liked getting homework and class assignments, because back then they couldn't double-side the pages. And so whenever I got a homework assignment, I got a piece of paper to draw a picture on the back. But that wasn't always enough, so we would go to the public library. We discovered that in picture books, the first page and sometimes the last page are blank pages. And so we would hide in the children's section, my sister would watch, and we would rip the pages out and stuff them down our shirts and bring them home and draw. And then one day, our parents dropped us off at church and didn't attend with us, and we were sitting in the pew alone. And there were Bibles across the front. And so I took a Bible. And in the Bible, the first page of the Bible and the last three pages of the Bible were blank. So my brother would cough, I would rip, and my sister would stuff it down her shirt. And that's how we did it. Now, if we had asked our teachers, they probably would have given us paper, but the rule when you're poor, the number one rule is you never let anyone know that you're poor, even though you know that everyone knows that you're poor. And so we would never, ever ask. I grew up in a generation where Teachers would take the roll call by saying how many people are buying hot lunch, how many people are buying cold lunch, and then how many people are buying free lunch today. It was 180 mornings of shame every year for me. <sighs> and, then, <laughs> and then my mother got divorced and she remarried 14 seconds later to a man who she worked with. <laughs> and suddenly there was money in the house again. But the money didn't trickle down. It was sort of like the American economy right now. <laughs> my, my parents always had money and we didn't. So my parents would go on Bermuda vacations and they would go to the Poconos and there was enough money to buy a pool in the backyard. But during the summer they would send us to Colt Park in Winsocket, Rhode Island because the Wick truck would come and there would be free lunches if we waited long enough. We were the first house in Blackstone to have a VCR, which I thought was great because it was like 30 pounds and attached to the remote control with a cord. So when my brother walked through the living room, I would pull on the cord and he would trip over. <laughs> but they had so much and we had so little. And it's tough to be poor, it's really tough. But when your parents aren't and you are, it's something else. <laughs> I remember we went to the Boston Armory Museum and I was the only kid who didn't have money to go into the gift shop. And so Mrs. Dunny, my best friend's mother, took me by the arm and she brought me in to buy me a present and she gave me a little statue. It was a plastic statue of a man in armor and I hated her for it because at that moment she was acknowledging that I was poor and she wasn't. And I put that damn statue on my desk for years and every time I looked at it, I hated it. And then the day came when my stepfather took me to uh, Boy Scouts. We were driving, and halfway there, he turned the radio down, and that was always the signal that he had something to tell me. <laughs> and he said, I want you to call me Dad. And my parents had been married, or my stepfather and my mother had been married for three or four months and I was still connected with my father. Eventually he would disappear for like 25 years, but at this point he was making an effort. He was living in the back of a liquor store in a stock room. He was actually poorer than me, so we were, there was a connection there. And so I told my stepfather I didn't want to call him dad 
because I had one already. And he became so angry, like instantly furious. He said, that man is not a father. Fathers don't let kids walk around in the winter in sneakers with holes in them. And I was, I was eight, and I didn't know what to say. And then I got angry, and I said, at least we were all poor together. <laughs> at least we all had holes in our shoes. Except I, I didn't say that. And so he brought me to Boy Scouts, and I didn't say anything. And a couple hours later, he came and he picked me up. And I got in the car and I closed the door and I looked at him and I said, hi, Dad. And he smiled at me. And I hated myself for saying it. And I, and I still hate myself today for saying it. Thank you.